Hey, what's up everybody? It's Red Wolf here and today we're here with interactive horror stories. Now it's sort of like a game. Um, it's got like some creepy pasta vibes. As far as I can tell, I really just downloaded it and opened it and it was like kind of like a storytelling horror game type of thing. Like you pick your outcome. I'm assuming. I haven't really played it so we're gonna find out together. Alright, so we got a couple different ones here. The doll, after funeral, crystal skull, evil beneath the ground, crystal skull two, menace and influent loop. Is there any sound to this? I guess not. All right, so as a single mother, you know how hard it is to look after a 13 year old girl. Hard, but still joyful. Her presence gives you all the strength you need. That's nice. Her name is Lisa. She's a shy girl. She doesn't talk much. You got divorced three years ago. Well, fuck my life, man. Because he cheated on you with his secretary. Yeah, yeah, that's that seems very accurate. <laughs> Lisa me misses her father, but you don't allow her to see him. She adores her father, but you think he's an asshole. That's about right. Lisa's a special kid. Her teacher once said that she's too intelligent for a girl her age, but you already knew it. Is this going to have jump scares? I hope so, because like, if I get some fucking reactions of me pissing myself over here, I think that would be better for my, for my YouTube channel. Her reactions are unexpectedly mature. She's also hardworking. You expect perfect, perfection from her. Her teacher told you that you must take Lisa to a psychiatrist. You will do it soon. She's a lonely girl, maybe because she doesn't talk much. You think that she needs friends, so you bought her a rag doll to seize her loneliness. That's the perfect fucking answer for everything, isn't it? Oh yeah, my daughter is like antisocial. Let me buy her a doll. Like what? A fucking A plus mom. A plus mom. You bought the rag doll from the local toy store. A possessed doll, mind you. <laughs> Not an expensive toy. Nothing too fancy. No, just a demon doll. Lisa might still like it. You know that expense doesn't make Lisa happier. The doll is a girl with big blue eyes and curly black hair. She has a wide grin that you can call friendly. Her dress is red matching her shoes. She also has eyebrows. The unnamed doll waits for her new owner in kid's bedroom. You haven't brought Lisa home from school yet. So fucking, what the fuck is this shit? Like, can we, can we admire like the fucking uh, paintings on the wall right there though? It's Friday, not a sunny day. The sky is covered with gray clouds. You are driving your car. Lisa sits on the next seat. The seat belts are worn tight. <laughs> she looks from the window blankly, without any expression on her face. You remember that the math exam results were going to be announced today. How are the exam results? Were you able to make any friends today? <laughs> Honey, were you able to make any friends today? Did you finally like get out of your little bubble? I bought you a rag doll today. Continue driving. Just silence. Just don't even acknowledge the child. Just keep driving. All right. I'll ask about the fucking exam results. Lisa sighs and sighs. Terrible. I'm the, I am the seventh in the class. Not first like the previous exam. I know you will be mad at me. I didn't study enough. You are right, Lisa. You should have studied more. I mean, at least you got a good grade to be seventh in class, I guess. It's okay, darling. She looks at you with a slight surprise. You always scolded her whenever she wasn't the best. Well, now I'm playing the mother and fuck. Like this mother, like I said, A plus technique. Now you say, it's okay, darling. She continues watching the cars passing by. <laughs> you are driving your car. Lisa sits on the next seat. The seat belts are worn tight. Like we've already discussed this. Who wrote this? Oh my god. <clears throat> she looks 
from the window blankly without any expression on her face. Oh, did we fail? It's showing us again. Were you able to make any friends today? No, she says with a determined voice. They are just idiots. For example, they see the other classes in the school as enemies, as if they were an enemy nation with a different religion. I mean, it is still silly to be enemies because of race or religion. These morons in my class hate each other just because they are different classes. Oh, we can't pick that one. How? Are we just picking the wrong things? You finally arrive home. The doll is in your bedroom, Lisa, you tell her. Oh, we were supposed to tell her the fucking doll. She climbs up the stairs slowly. Apparently, she isn't so excited about the doll. You follow her to the bedroom. She picks up the doll that's on her bed. I will think of a nice name, Lisa says. But I have, but I have got homework to do first. Play comes after study. So we're taught. Yes, study. So you leave Lisa alone in her room. You have got a lot of work to do anyways. Not only you will cook, but you also need to work on a novels, on a novels cover illustration as a freelance artist. All right. The deadline is closed, so you work hard nowadays. You are not so happy with your life. You force Lisa to study in order to have a better life than yours. And that's understandable. You work all day. The only break you take is the dinner. You don't have, you don't talk about anything during dinner with Lisa. Wow, Jesus, fuck. Mother of the year. It's 22, in other words, that's 11? No, 9? <laughs> I don't even know. Fuck, what military time is 22? Yeah, because if 20... Technically, it doesn't go to 24. 24 would be midnight, right? So, yeah, 11, that's 10. <laughs> it's bedtime for Lisa. You visit Lisa before she sleeps. She's in her pink dotted pajamas. She's holding the doll in her arms. Mom, I am going to tell you something, but you won't believe me. After a few seconds of silence, she speaks. The doll can speak. She told me her name is Anna. Go on, because I want to know. Lisa explains, Anna says that she was nothing but a piece of light. A light that's drifting in absolute blackness. A weak light in the inf infinite darkness. You know what? This kind of reminds I recently uh, watched chapter two of It. It's kind of reminded me of that right now. The whole like light and darkness shit. Uh, if you guys haven't uh, watched chapter two of it yet, don't worry, I won't spoil it. I'm just saying that it reminds me of it. Then she found life in this doll. She was waiting in the toy store for a friend, lonely. And today, she found me. She says that she loves me. It's also giving me some Chucky vibes. Don't be ridiculous, dolls can't speak. I believe in you. We need to throw the doll away. Yeah, no, I think, I think our first instance I believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> That's... Uh, what did you tell her? Yeah, I, I do want to know. <laughs> like, Lisa smiles. And I said that I will be her new friend. And I will always love her. She continues. And then she told me that she was happy. Happy like the times when she used to be an angel. Don't be really ridiculous. Dolls can't speak. Lisa sighs. I know it is very silly, Mom. I think you will see I am right soon. Anyway, good night. Oh, I can't fucking wait. Because of all the hard work, you begin to feel tired, and you go to bed. It doesn't take you long for you to fall asleep. A few hours later, you wake up to the sounds coming from the outside. I'm, like, waiting for a fucking jump scare. It's like... Look, it's it's not bad. The writing is not that bad. As lovely as it is written, I feel like there's going to be some jump scares. I hope so. Please fucking scare me shitless. 
you hear hysterical laughters coming from the garden. It would help if there was actual sound to this. They belong to a girl, specifically Lisa's. You stand up and look outside the window. You see Lisa standing and laughing in the garden under the pale moonlight. She's facing back. You can't see her face. Um, let's go out there. Because let's make this a horror movie cliche. You climb down nervously. You wear your shoes and walk to the garden. Lisa doesn't react to your presence. You approach Lisa and put your hand on her shoulder. She turns her face to you. It, it is not Lisa's face. Dun, dun, dun. It is not even a human face. The texture of the face is a gray rag. The eyes are quite big for a human. So is the wide smile. The voice changes. It doesn't belong to a girl now, but a demon. She stares at you and laughs. I was, I was waiting for a fucking uh, for a jump scare or something. You wake up. It was just a nightmare. Of course it was. You are all sweaty with terror. The moaning has already broken. The morning, the moaning. <laughs> what the fuck? Fix yourself, eyeballs. The morning has already broken. You decide to check Lisa. Lisa is sleeping peacefully, hugging Anna. Anna is carrying that wired smile that annoys you now. But hey, it is normal. It would be terrible if the doll's face was different than how you bought it. You go to the kitchen to prepare a week, a weekend breakfast. You usually make omelet with sausage on Saturdays. You will repeat that habit today. You are in the kitchen. You take the sausage and eggs from the fridge. You need to slice the sausage. So you open the drawer to pick up the meat knife. Something is wrong. The knife isn't there. Dun, dun, dun. Search for the knife in the kitchen. Look inside the garbage bin. Why would the knife be in the garbage? I mean, we got to possess dolls. I don't know. You search the whole kitchen. No drawer is not looked into. You even looked in the fridge. <laughs> oh, yeah, I must have accidentally placed my knife in the fridge, you know, because that's a normal place to put a knife. No, the knife isn't there either. There's only one place you haven't looked inside. The garbage bin. You open the lid. You couldn't find a knife inside the garbage bin. You search the knife in everywhere possible, but it isn't in vain. So you decide to use another knife to prepare the omelet. I know where the fuck the knife is at. It's in with our daughter in the fucking doll's possession. She probably hid it under the fucking pillow. After you prepare the omelet, Lisa wakes up and joins you in the kitchen. You eat the breakfast with her. She doesn't look so happy. There is an uneasiness on her face. The meat knife is missing. Yeah, I want to fucking know. You have to study today. No play. Don't ask him. The meat knife is missing. Yeah. It is strange, Mom. I have no idea where the knife went. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Did Anna speak again? She did not speak today, but she kept changing her facial expression. Sometimes she looked to be so happy. Sometimes not. She was frowning. There was anger on her face. In her face. I can't understand her. Lisa continues eating the breakfast. You have to study today. No play. <sighs> this is Saturday. But okay, Mom. I will work hard and be better. Then she looked away. She might be hiding her thoughts. She was not such a vocal girl. All right. Breakfast is over. I need to study math says Lisa, then climbs up to her room. You also need to work on the novel cover. You are both busy now. It is evening now. As you work on the cover, you hear screams from Lisa's room. You rush to her room. You find Lisa standing and breathing in panic. Her arms are full of stitches. She did it, Lisa screams, showing her Heavily wounded arms as blood leaks down the floor. She jumped and ran away, Lisa points to the open window. You look outside. You can't see any, any running dolls there. Maybe because she ran away. 
or it is too dark outside, or Lisa is lying. I won't allow her. Fuck, they're fucking writing this. It's fine. Slap. I mean, apparently, because we are a fucking hell of a mother. Um, you slap your daughter so hard that she hits the floor. She starts crying on the floor. Jesus fucking Christ. Crawling into a fetus shape. But she doesn't say anything. You leave the room with anger, and you don't visit Lisa again tonight. Oh, my God. Now there's a sound. It is 3 a.m. now. It's raining outside. A lightning strike and enlighten your dark bedroom. You haven't slept. You don't care about the freelance work you got. All these events make you too stressed to care about your business. You see Lisa's silhouette at the door. She walks in. Lisa's holding something behind her, but you can't see it. She approaches you in bed, climbs it, and comes mm -hmm. through you. With a sudden move, she stabs your meat knife in your belly. You never trusted me, good God. She stabs you once again. You didn't allow me to live my childhood. She keeps stabbing your pipe with insanity. I hate you, Mom. I hate you, fuck. Well, this got really dark, really fucking fast. This is fire once you hear as your own daughter repeatedly stabs you and commits a fratricide. The end. I kind of want to do the Ouija. Um, is this, please tell me this is a different person wrote it. <laughs> or is it all the same? Just, we, we want a little bit better. Just, I mean, a little bit better quality. You are a single father. Your wife, Linda, passed away. While giving birth to your son a year ago, you'll be able to use the Ouija board in contact with an entity who claims to be Linda. In this story. All right, that sounds good. New Jersey, 1981. You are a single father. Your wife, Linda, passed away a year ago at childbirth. Your son's name is Mark. He's a cute baby with blue eyes that he got from his mother. As expected, you are in agony with the loss of your wife. Mark is the only thing that you hold on to. All that matters. All right, so far so good. You have been in love with Lisa since the first time you saw her. She was so pretty. You wanted to be with her forever. It still surprised you to have such a charming woman to fall in love with you too. During Linda's pregnancy, you lost your job at some point while having dads. She supported you in every way she could. Not only she was your wife, but also your best friend. You found another job after Mark was born and Linda died. But of course, it doesn't make you a happy man when you have lost your best friend and wife. Looking in Mark's blue eyes gives you all the strength to go on as a single father. You see the future in his eyes and the past. The past when you were happy with your family, despite of everything falling apart. You, will, you would lose everything if you lost Mark. Another reason what made Linda and Mark so significant to you is you had lost your parents, too. Well, fuck. Basically, you have no family members left except for your son. Nobody to consult for things that you need to talk with a family member. Linda's parents? You don't see those assholes anymore. They have done wrong to you and Linda. That's in-laws for you. It is a foggy morning. You are, ta you are taking your walk in an isolated green forest, which is close to the suburb you live. You can't see anything but fog beyond five meters. There is a single path, and you are walking it. You know that the path leads to a lake. You have been there countless times. There's nobody else you can see here in this forest, but somehow you feel that something awaits for you at the end of the path. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, right. <laughs> 
you reach a lake and you encounter a woman who looks uncannily familiar standing at the side of the lake. She's turning her back to you. You see that she has blonde hair and a black dress. So familiar. She slowly turns back and faces you with a smile on her beautiful face. She is nobody but Linda, completely alive. Did you miss me, darling? Linda, is that you? How is this possible? How is this possible? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I like this better. She holds your hands. Buy a Ouija board. I will talk to you through that. You know what a Ouija... <laughs> pronounce Ouija or Ouija <laughs> board is. It is the board with letters and numbers on it. And you use it to talk to spirits. A strong wind starts blowing. In a blink of an eye, her flesh turns into ashes. The harsh wind carries the black ashes away, leaving a grim skeleton standing with you. You find yourself holding the hands of a skeleton who looks into your very soul, with carved eyes on her skull. You wake up. It was a dream, a repeating one. You keep having this dream every night. It started a few days ago. It's Monday morning now, and you are in your bedroom. It's winter, but still sunny. After getting off the bed, you take a look at yourself in the mirror, hanged on the wall. Oh my god, I thought that said, like, we, <laughs> that we hanged ourselves. Fuck. You look worn out. Your house has two stories. The bedrooms are the upper one. You walk into Mark's bedroom, which is next to yours. Trying not to make a sound, you slowly open the wooden door of the bedroom. Your son sleeps peacefully in his cradle. You would expect a one-year-old to make noises all the time, but Mark is not such a boy. He barely cried. He has been a happy boy. The bedroom walls are painted in a calming tone of blue. A circle of toys are hanged upon the cradle. Cute figures of a lion, sun, red cat, moon are the parts of, his, of this installment. There is a big poster of a yellow baby bird on the wall. You change Mark's diapers, like you always do in the mornings. After you complete changing the diapers, the doorbell rings. Was that a doorbell that was like barely audible? It's probably the caretaker, Isabella. She comes every morning at this hour. You go downstairs and open the door. Good morning, sir. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me, uh, I feel like we needed like a Spanish or Italian accent for Isabella. Good morning, sir. That's neither. Whatever. She's a woman in her 20s with curly black hair and brown eyes. She steps into your house. Your daily routine starts with making the breakfast. While Isabella takes care of Mark, you go to work after the breakfast, unless it's weekend. Isabella walks into the kitchen, opens the fridge, and picks up the formulated milk for babies without mothers. That's fucked. That's horrible. That's so fucked. <laughs> like, talk about the dreams. Don't talk about the dreams. Yeah, let's talk about the dreams. Before Isabella leaves the kitchen, you tell her everything you see in these reoccurring dreams and how Linda asks you to use a Ouija board to communicate with her. It's easy to see how surprised Isabella is. Sir, don't do that. It is too dangerous. You shouldn't mess with the dead. Isabella climbs up the stairs to take care of Mark. You are hungry. You need to make breakfast. I thought we already were making breakfast. You like listening to music on the radio while making breakfast. 
Will you turn on the radio today? Sure. You turn on the radio. The playing song is Sunny from Bonnie. Um, I'm not saying that. Yesterday my life was filled with rain sunny you smiled at me. I don't even know that song, do I? Anyways, you like that song. It is kind of what reminds you of happy times you had with Linda. I kind of want to Google that, but I don't want this to be blocked as a um, copyright or whatever. You make yourself an omelet and a hot cup of coffee. That's your daily routine. After you finish the breakfast, it's time to leave the house. Will you buy a Ouija board? You can go to a toy store to buy it before going to work. Or you can refuse to buy it, thus refusing to contact with what you see in your dreams. I mean, like, the whole point of the story is to buy a Ouija board and, you know, talk to some demon, right? So if we don't buy it, does that mean it ends? If we don't buy the Ouija board, does that mean the story ends right here? I'm kind of curious. So you say goodbye to Isabella and go to work without buying the Ouija board. Nothing interesting happens for the rest of the day. Your usual depressing, boring life continues. Well, fuck. You, are, you no longer see Linda in your dreams. Did she give up on you? Or what trespassing your dreams of something was something but your lovely wife's soul? You'll never know. Maybe it's for the best. The end. The story has three. I never figured it would end. All right, let's go through and actually buy the Ouija board. <clears throat> How is this possible? All right. Check on Mark. Open the door. Isabella, talk about the dreams. Turn on the radio. Buy the Ouija board. There we go. Despite it being a winter day, it's not cold outside. There is a toy store you know. This is where you buy Mark's toys. You remember seeing a Ouija board there. It doesn't take long to reach the store. You enter the store and start searching for the board among all the colorful toys. You find a box that looks quite different from the other toys. It doesn't look cute, not something you'd buy for your kid. It's a grim looking Ouija board. I like how it gives you the options again. Buy the board, don't buy the board. You pick up the box of the Ouija board and move to the cash point. The cashier is a brunette young woman. She gets up to see the box. Ah, you want to buy that? What will you use it for, if I may ask? I keep seeing my deceased wife in my dreams. I think it's none of your business. <laughs> well, I think we're a nice guy. I have to warn you, in my religion, dead doesn't talk with us. There are things that claim they are souls of humans, but in truth, they are not. They are evil. Don't buy the board. I'll still buy it. Yeah. Okay, as you wish, but you, if you are going to use it, don't use it by yourself. And never ask when or how someone will die. Oh, shit. So you pay the board's price and buy it. You put it in a plastic bag with the logo of the toy store and go to your office. As an accountant, you think that you will have a dull job. Nothing interesting happens during the work. You have no friends to talk to. Well, we are just a miserable sack of shit, aren't we? After the shift ends, you are ready to go home. Darkness has fallen. Go home. <laughs> Knowing Isabella is at home, you ring the bell when you arrive home. Welcome, she says with a smile after opening her door. Her shift ends when you come home. She got ready to head off. Mark is sleeping peacefully. He has just started sleeping, Isabella says before leaving the house. You can ask her to assist you with the, in the science. Ask her to join you. Sure. 
Sorry, I can't do that. You mustn't either. Isabella leaves. You are alone with Mark now. Before starting the science, you climb science science. You climb the stairs and check on Mark. He looks so happy and peaceful while sleeping. You close the door and descend the stairs. You use the board in your living room. There is a table you can use there. You had heard of it's best to turn off the lights before talking to a Ouija board. So you get a candle from the kitchen and light it. Then you turn off the lamps. So the only light, so the only thing that enlightens the room is the candle. This doesn't sound like a very fucking good idea at all. You pull the wooden board from its box and place it on the table. Then you get the planch, planch, planchette, whatever the fuck that is, the wooden part which you will put your finger on. The summon entity is supposed to move the planchette when your finger is on it. Are you ready? I wonder if a Ouija board actually works. Like, I know it's taboo and shit, like, don't fucking uh, mess with one. And I don't think I will, but I still wonder if it's a real thing. Because Hollywood has hyped it so much. <gasps> we get to use it. Linda. 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 Is that how do you put just two fingers? I think it's like this, right? At least from what I see in fucking movies and videos. Can we actually move it? Keep your finger on the flashlight. Hey, her, here, here. Are you really Linda? Will I bring Mark up as well? Are you watching us from there? What do you want to tell me? I'm gonna go with, are you really Linda? Of course it's gonna say yes. Keep your finger on it, okay. What do you want to tell me? I, IRS. IRS Z S what? Next page. What the fuck is IRS Z S? Is it the name of the fucking demon? Let's try it again. Cause it's not blacked out. I wonder if it's gonna do the same. Nope. F F you from love F F U M L. Okay, just I'm gonna keep clicking because I feel like it might say something different. E A E. Ink. Okay, let's just go to the next page. Why did you return? What does moon mean? What do you want from me? Night? I gotta keep my mouse on the fucking thingy. What does moon mean? B X W V. What the fuck? I'm gonna actually search this up because I want to know what the fuck moon means in uh, Ouija board things. See, Ouija, Ouija boy. I 
how do you fucking spell Ouija board? I don't even know. Oh, there we go. It's with a May. What does the moon mean in Ouija board? Let's see. The sun means gold and the moon means silver. Okay. All spirit is the sun from the ancient blah 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 blah. The idea was to wear out the structures of matter until it assembles something else. Alright. That's one of the answers. Ancient, apparently ancient Ouija boards date to 540 BC. Fuck. Alright, where's... Alright. Let's try this again. Maybe it'll give us a different answer. E S V is vo is void. I'm, I'm gonna fucking conjure a demon in my own fucking house. <laughs> Poof! Hello. <laughs> is voimuk? Is voimuk? The fuck is that? Should I move on with my life and meet a new woman? Why did you leave us? Are you peaceful? Oh, I don't want to ask that. That seems like it's going to go to no. Why did you leave us? D. D Dick. I left you. Did. Didn't. Didn't. Didn't know. Did not. No, I shouldn't move on with my life. Are you peaceful? No. Well, fuck. Why are you restless? Moon. What the fuck does moon mean? In this game, anyways. When did we get married? Oh, I heard that, like, um, I watched a documentary, because, like, you know how supposedly spirits know exactly the answer, especially if it's, like, an evil entity or something? They know the answer, because, like, when you ask a question, it's always in the back of your mind, so therefore they're, like, reading your mind type of thing. When did we get married? It says 1978. That's because we're thinking of that year. What was your favorite color? Oh, shit. When will we be together? Never. Yeah, I thought as much. Jesus, fuck. When will I die? How will I die? When will Mark die? How will my Jesus, fuck. Should I just say goodbye? When will I die? Let's just put five years? In five years? All right. I will die in five years from now. How will I die? Sweet, sweet, 
suicide. Oh, God. This just got really fucking dark. All right, let's just say goodbye. Oh, God. It's not letting us. And the plant just throws itself. It flies to the window of the living room, breaking it. It didn't let us say goodbye. You hear the radio in the kitchen. It started to play. Something turned on. It plays a sinister voice that laughs. Laughter of a clown. It doesn't stop. You feel him mocking you. You walk to the kitchen and turn off the radio. Now you hear Mark crying in his room. There's cert that's certainly not good. You frantically try to open the door of Mark's room. It's locked. The door, Jesus, the sound effects. The door is not broken yet. You hear the muffled scream of Mark. Kick the door again. The door is broken. You rush to Mark's cradle. His pillow covers his face. It's apparent that he was choked. Mark shows no sign of life. He's dead. Fuck! You cry in despair. You were warned not to use the Ouija board. Now you are alone with your remorse. Soon, you call 911. Nobody believes that Mark was killed by a supernatural entity. All the proofs show that Mark was killed by his father. You get arrested. Well, of course. Time flies fast, and nothing gets better. You get sentenced to life for killing your son. You'll spend the rest of your life alone in a cell. And that's how your psychological problems start. You find yourself thinking about morbid matters, like the rotten corpses of Linda and Mark, or what Mark has seen while he was choking him to death, or how the Guardians would react if they found you have hung yourself. Fuck. Sometimes you start laughing hysterically, but there is nothing funny to laugh at. Sometimes you throw wild tantrums, screaming with anger between the four walls of your cell. Are you going mad? Or is it taking you over? There is no difference, honestly. During the fifth year of your imprisonment, this is a senior, but we fucking kill ourselves. You decide to end the dire suffering, and you succeed. That's it for this video. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to become a part of the Wolf Pack, don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, hit that like button with your paw, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.